Hello, friends. I am Finish Lee. This video is part of my chemical process typing channel on YouTube. This video is about slurry piping. Slurry piping system, like any other system, consists of slurry pumps, pipelines, and valves. Special considerations relevant to this system are introduced by the fact that slurry is not homogeneous phase unlike gas or liquid. Slurry can be described as liquid with solids suspended therein. Typical industrial instances of slurry handling are coal practices suspended in water in coal waterings, crystals suspended in solvent in crystallization, wax manufacturing process. Feed to any filtration equipment called suspension encountered in paper making, sludge encountered in influent treatment. One or more of various considerations such as solid concentration determines behavior of slurry. Usually expressed in weight percent of solid, practical size of solids, nature of solids, soft, hard, abrasive, properties of liquid density, viscosity, chemical nature. The design of the system including selection of proper materials is governed by following general considerations. No solid deposition in system. No change in slurry composition from inlet to outlet of the system. Minimum wear and tear or erosion. The design and engineering of the system components is discussed in the following order. Type of slurry. Line sizing and pressure drop. Special consideration. Pumps for slurry. Instrumentation. Type of slurry. Slurries can be classified into broad categories as homogeneous or heterogeneous. The type of slurry whether homogeneous or heterogeneous dictates rheological properties and therefore characterization is important. Homogeneous slurry. In this type of slurry, solid particles are uniformly distributed in liquid medium. Such slurries are characterized by high concentration of solids having small fine particle size. Typical examples are sewage sludge, clay slurry. Cement kelpie slurry. Such slurries usually exhibit non-Newtonian flow behavior effective viscosity changing with shear rate. Majority of them show behavior like minimum plastic, no shear rate up to yield stress and Newtonian behavior for stress beyond yield stress. Heterogeneous slurry, the solids are not uniformly distributed in liquid in such slurries. In a horizontal pipe, the concentration of solids is higher at lower levels and lower at upper levels. Such a slurry is characterized by low concentration of large size particles. Phosphate rock slurry is a typical example of this type. Mixed behavior of slurry. Many slurries encountered in industry may show behavior in between homogeneous and heterogeneous. This would be more so in particles of different sizes constitute a slurry. In such a situation, dominant characteristics have to be identified and design procedure adopted to arrive at safer design. A typical example of this type is slurry of coal particles in water. Select slurry concentration. Solid concentration of slurry becomes an important consideration for following reasons. Solid concentration governs the slurry specific gravity and hence pumping cost and sometimes the remodeling of the slurry. That certain solid concentration slurry may be difficult to transport or unstable. In such situations, solid concentration would have to be selected for proper transportation. Solid concentration and static settled slurry would be of useful guidance in this respect. Generally solid concentration 10 to 15% below static settled slurry concentration would prove stable and convenient for handling. Solid concentrations in settled slurries could depending on nature of solid, 
Very over the wide range pen to 50%. Generally solid through particle size of 0.4 to 0.5 micron may form a stable slurry for solid concentration up to 40%. Select trial pipe size. Since the barrage of slurry volume divided by time is known, selection of pipe size, particularly pipe inside via, will determine the velocity of slurry through the pipe. Volume flow rate equals velocity multiplied by area of cross section. The velocity calculated is referred to as design velocity. The design velocity is significant with reference to the critical velocity. Critical velocity is an important parameter for a slurry. When slurry flows at velocity below the critical velocity solids in slurry may start separating out and settling in horizontal pipe. The critical velocity is analogous to transition velocity in flow of homogeneous fluids. The velocity at which laminar flow ceases to exist at Reynolds number equals 2100. Tendency of solids in slurry to settle or separate out will be reduced in pressure of turbulence. The critical velocity for a given slurry will be determined by different parameters such as size and specific gravity of solids, solids concentration, viscosity of liquid and degree of turbulence. Calculate critical velocity. Calculations of critical velocity for homogeneous slurry is now described as below. For heterogeneous slurries, the procedure is little complex. For homogeneous slurry, the procedure for calculating critical velocity is as follows. If the slurry shown Newtonian behavior, then critical Reynolds number is considered as 2100 and critical velocity is calculated. Slurry flow rate equals 3000 liter per minute equals 3 cubic meter per minute. The parabus cross city of slurry equals 60 centi poise equals 0.06 poise. Specific gravity of slurry equals 1.61. Density equals 1610 kilograms per cubic meters. For Reynolds number of 2100, assume pipe ID equals 200 millimeter equals 0.2 meter. The velocity you select should be greater than this critical velocity. If the slurry is non-Newtonian type and exhibits minimum plastics type behavior, then the procedure adopted for calculating critical velocity is as follows. Enter the chart with value of NHE. Find the value critical Reynolds number MREC. In present case, MREC equals 6400 say. Calculate critical velocity VC. Critical velocity can be calculated by using one of the following relationships. Compare design velocity with critical velocity. VC equals 1.193 meter per second. V equals 1.60 meter per second. V minus VC equals 1.6 minus 1.193 equals 0.417 meter per second. The trial pipe size selected should be such that V minus VE should be 0.3 meter per second or more. In the calculations about the minus VC equals 0.417 meter per second, therefore selected pipe size is satisfactory. Calculate design friction loss. Once the selected trial pipe size is satisfactory, the pressure loss can be calculated by usual equation. For this calculation, the numerical value of S is to be selected from S versus Reynolds number charts. Since S depends on roughness of pipe, as a considered human William factor equals 100. Secondly, it is a common practice to express the friction loss per se 10 meter piping. 
For this purpose, equivalent lengths of fittings, etc., have to be taken into account. Calculate system pressure gradient and pump discharge pressure for transport of such a flurry. Consider elevation change of 10 meters and total equivalent length of 200 meters. Calculate total head to be developed by pump. Material for flurry lines. Carbon steel. Cast iron. Lined with basalt. Fittings. Wall radius vents. Sleeve couplings. Higher size fitting. Special fittings. Special considerations. Slope of pipe lines. Slots of horizontal lines should not exceed angle of repose for slurry. Provisions for flushing and draining of pipe lines and manual cleaning. Selection of wood resistance materials or higher fitness. Identification of wear prime point. Downstream of well. Joints for easy replacement of worn out positions. Use a long radius vent. No dead spaces. General observation. Where an erosion is higher for velocities more than 2.1 meter per second without critical velocity may dictate minimum velocity as 1.2 meter per second. Use valves with maximum port size. Use full heart ball valves. The void use of globe value feet may be plucked by solid deposition. Provide flushing connection for valves. Pump for slurry. Different types can be used. Centrifugal. Positive displacement plunger and piston type. Centrifugal pump is used for very dilute slurries. Some type pumps could be used. Impeller may have to be replaced frequently due to erosion. Therefore, slip casing type design is preferred. Load efficiencies are to be expected. Rubber lining may prove useful in many situations. Special wood resistant materials should be used. Flushing connection for shaft sealing arrangement is to be provided. Positive displacement plunger and the stentyping are used for high discharge pressure above 40 bar. Plunger type design is preferred for abrasive slurries. Flushing arrangement for plunger packing is desirable. Liners of wood resistant materials inside the cylinder can yield longer trouble free services. Instrumentation. Pressure of solids and possibilities of erosion put many restrictions on instruments to be used. Some relevant observations are as follows. For measuring slurry concentration, use of radiation density meter is convenient. However, periodic calibration may be necessary. If a side stream is gone and then returns conveniently measured by magnetic flow meter which are rather expensive, Flow rate of slurry can be conveniently measured by magnetic flow meter which are rather expensive. When positive displacement pump is used for slurry transfer pump speed and displacement can be used to calculate slurry flow rate. Pressure gauges and other instruments mounted on pipeline are susceptible to damage due to vibrations. For measurement of pressure, Diaphragm type gauges are recommended. These should be provided with back flushing arrangements connected to pipe line with capillary. Moreover, the gauges should be separately supported and not mounted directly on pipe line. Thanks for learning. <laughs>